opportunity to like, I don't know, just be there for you. I was just so excited to be working with Thanks. you that I just wanted to like, Hollywood royalty. I loved it too. Yeah, she's I, Hollywood You are Hollywood royalty. royalty. But I'm going to say one thing. You understand. You know? Jesus. My mom and dad you are loved you. My, Sharon, my mom and dad were just like, just thought you were the cat's meow. They were so excited that I was working with you. I grew Thank up you. watching you on TV. You're a role model for women. I mean, so to work with you is just really, it's fucking great. And then to find out that after you work with her, she's one of the most true, honest people you've ever met. I mean, and I, you know, sometimes you work with people that have, you know, done a lot of work and they, they put themselves above you and there's just hierarchy. Not fucking no. Sharon. She's right there. She doesn't put I mean, you above or below. It's just actor to actor. And you really feel that. And it makes you feel so good. Question for you then now. You met a man on the show, Carl. Yes. Had a romance. <laughs> Peter, Ma Peter McNeil. It was a little difficult for younger people. How did that feel with the show sort of diving into people getting up there in age, sort of falling in love? And I liked it. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I have to tell you something. All right. Did you have any of this? I have to get Oh, tell us. No, 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 no. I don't think I ever told any of you this. She did love it. She had sex. Peter McNeil came on the show, what, second year? Yeah. Was it second? Yeah. Or was it third? Third. Third season. No, he showed up on the second, but all that stuff started in the third. Right. I mean, but his character showed up on the second. Yeah. Really? The kid with the dumpster kid was, oh, was, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry. The beginning of the third, we the had dumpster. our thing. Dumpster boy. You had your thing. <laughs> he kissed me. Uh -huh. And I was so besotted <laughs> by this man. He's kissing me. Like that. Like Sharon what? Glass, like Sharon that. Glass, yeah. this strong, powerful woman, would turn into a little girl. Yeah. The first time they well, kissed, we, kissed we saw cartoon-like little hearts and birds kind of like going yeah. around. Yeah. 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 Look at her face. face. Yep. She is 12 years old right now. She's blushing. Peter McNeil, I will say this. Peter McNeil is a sexy motherfucker. I think he's so sexy. He's a sexy and they were met for and he's each other on actor. TV, of yeah. course. <laughs> and and, and then, when, then after we did the kiss, I think he liked it, too. Uh -huh. If you ever see this, Peter, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. Or you're a really good actor. <laughs> Peter, come on in. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Sharon West, uh, look at her reef for a not, not to, I mean, not to bring it back to me, but to bring it back to me. When I was, when I was dating George, I can't tell you the number of times I got stopped on the street by old, like by older, by older men who were like, "Thank you so much yeah. for that story. It was so important to me to see." Yeah. You know, at, at first I thought it was just, "Oh, this is my lost youth," you know, yes. on this show. But then, then to see that, I, I, it sort of, it just reminded me that I, 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 I'm still alive and I still have a life to live. And, exactly. Yeah. And then, what, what did? Also, because you know, I was I was going through all the weight issue then, at those times, and um, there was a scene where he's supposed to pull me. It says in this in the in the script that he pulls me on his lap, and I said, "Can I add a line?" And I went to Ron and Dan. And I said, "Can I add a line?" Because we never added anything without asking permission. I said, "Could I add a line where I pull off and say, no, 'No, I'm too heavy.'" And Ron then said, no, no, we, we want to keep you beautiful. You don't need to say that. I said, I do need to say it. I need to say it for every heavy woman who met, who a man has wanted to have sit on their lap, who has that same feeling. No, I'm, you know, I've been in bed with you, but my sitting on your lap is like, you. and, and so I, they let me say it. And I said, no, I'm too heavy. And he said, oh, stop it, you're gorgeous. And he yeah. added that. I'm too heavy. You're beautiful. And that, that Carl McGruff voice. Yeah. 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 And I thought, I hope every woman who's got know. a weight <laughs> issue is watching this mm -hmm. and knows, you know, it's nice to be around. And I think that's a very important statement to make, especially yeah. in television. I mean, that was a strange time for me coming on, on Queer. In fact, I, I said that because I was really heavy in those days. Really, I'm, I'm thinner now. But I said to, to Ron Dan, before I came in, I asked the head of Showtime, do they, do they know what I look like? And then I was almost 200 pounds when I started Debbie. And um, they said, yes, we want this. I said, okay, I'm on a plane. And you're the first person I saw. Well, I, was do I was doing my producer session. It's the first time I met Dan and Ron. I was waiting. I was pacing outside. I'm a pacer. Pacing outside, going over my sides <laughs> yeah, and stuff. I remember that. Uh, auditioning for Ted. Um, <laughs> but, um, and, uh, and Sharon got off the elevator, and she was like, there are glasses, you know, where am I going? And I said, uh, I said, are you looking for the queerest phone casting? And she said, yes, right down the hall. And she walked by and I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> and that's weird.
we first met. Yeah. But anyway, I, I did that whole red wig. I did, you know, this is interesting for them, but I did that whole look because Ron Dennis, and they said, no, we want you to look like yourself. And I said, I look like Chris Cagney gone bad, and I'm not going to do that. It gave me a chance. They gave me a chance. You all gave me a chance to reinvent myself, reinvent my career. I got to hide under all that crap I was doing. Uh, I felt safer under that. No, no, but I think well, it did much, much in the same way that, like, the sex in the pilot of, this, of the show kind of yeah. blew the doors off it. I think the same yeah. thing with Debbie. You were like, yep, I got old, I'm fat, and I'm loud, and I'm Sharon Glass. And I'm still a really fucking good actress. Yeah, right on. You know, and so I think you just blew the doors off it, and then we're able to settle in, and, and I mean, you know. Well, because yeah. Sharon was our star. It was, I, I, I got to make the transition to... Character. You know, she gave the show sure. what it needed. And it also, cre it needed also created her. that moment where your wig fell scary. off. Fuck the episode, she, the part where your wig slips oh, at brilliant. that point, which, you know, had yeah. you just created a character based on what you normally look like. But then I didn't want the blonde underneath it, so right. I made them spray it. You made yeah. them spray yeah. it. Dark yeah. underneath. So yeah. But that was, that was brilliant, actually. One but of the uh, things that really, me. that really oh. speaks to me about the show is not only does it tackle issues that happen just in the world in general, but issues specific to the gay community, talking about intergenerational dating. But one of the things that really spoke to me was the drug addiction storyline. As somebody who has a lot of sobriety now, I was really touched at the way the show handled it because they handled it in a real way. It wasn't... I spent time on it. They really spent did. a lot of time on it, and I have to say, I really applaud the way that you and your character handled the addiction, mm. the rehabilitation, the intervention. And it's always odd how in the gay world, lesbians always come to <laughs> save gay men, but it always works out that way. The relapse, it was, painful to watch it. It was yeah. so painful, oh. especially because I lived through it myself. There's that relatability. Did you have any problems when, when you started reading the scripts? Because I know you get them in advance, and you're like, oh, no, this is... Yeah, whole 24 hours. That one, yeah. Oh, you didn't get them? Oh, because when I've no. done series, it's always... <clears throat> we get them. No, sometimes it'd be right we, up to the wire. I mean, we get a we, few Usually days. a few Sorry, days. Yeah. Yeah. You were aware of that storyline. Yeah, we kind of knew it was coming. I mean, I, and I had had, you know, however many, already three seasons of, like, every week getting a script and going, oh, what are you doing today? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, it starts uh, off. This I mean, was... But, but this, yeah. you know, we, 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 I mean, Dan and Ron, I mean, you know, it really goes to them, the applause, because they wrote, you know, this incredible thing, and they handled it so well. And, you know, oh, we talked about it, and all, we, and all we talked about was that, you know, it was we knew it was an important thing. It was really kind of... Just coming to the the fore in the it's community, destroying it's really the gay community, in, right? and so now we it's, it's really gotten only gotten worse. But um, we just wanted to make sure we handled it and made it real, you know. And and, and beyond what it did to this one person, what it did to this relationship, yeah. what it did to the couple, you know. Right. And and it's you know it's as much Peter's uh, support and all that stuff, and you know, and what we were yes. able to bring it to it together. I think that that it made it work. Squat. But it was, uh, it I was mean, I think it was, do. <laughs> yeah, it was Scott and I were really, Scott and I met at the, at um, our first screen test. We were, we were, we are, and always, we are the earliest people everywhere. We're the first people at every dinner, we're the first people everywhere. We just are habitually early, both of us. So we're there for our 8 a.m. screen test at 7 a.m. Sitting in the, the building wasn't even open yet, so we're sitting in the elevator well of, of the Showtime offices, and there's like a stack of USA Todays, and we're both kind of scoping each other out, and you know, hmm, I'm puffy-eyed. I look like a four-year-old. Because hmm. you were auditioning okay. for his part. No, not at that. But no, at, by this point, it's already been that. That oh. has already switched oh, okay. tracks. But originally, I was. But that's a long story that's been told before. So, so we're sitting there, and uh, and finally, you know, so uh, so who uh, who are you reading for? Who are you testing for? And Ted. Oh, Emmett. Oh, great. So, and we <laughs> immediately became friends. And, and competition we, out of the way. We, yeah. um, we really took care of each other. We really, I mean, the whole series very quickly. I think the reason Ted and Emmett became best friends on the show is because Scott and I became really, really close friends. And that, it just, it just lended itself, it just developed, you know, out of that. And, um, and so we who, had, we who were so there for each other, like if Scott had a shit ass, you know, scene to do or something, I was there to talk him down. If, he, if I had something horrible to go through, he was there for me. And this, this one storyline, we couldn't do that. We couldn't care for each other because the whole storyline was about how we can't care for each other. It was adversarial. Yeah. So, so it was, 
not only were we shooting the most difficult material we did in the history of the series, we didn't have the same support system in place. 